Hey everybody, it's Dr. Obinde. Let's discuss the um, macroscopic organization of immune tissue and this comprises the lymphoid organs, okay? So the immune system is able to distinguish self from non-self. So any foreign substances uh, are identified. Lymphoid organs help to neutralize or inactivate foreign molecules such as bacteria, viruses, and parasites and they're able to destroy cells that are infected by viruses, cancer cells, or cells that are uh, uh, from transplanted organs. And this actually, uh, there's an element of autoimmune disease too, where immune cells attack the body's cells. Normal cells will be attacked by immune cells. And that's what causes autoimmune diseases such as um, systemic lupus erythematosus. So the cells of the immune system are usually distributed throughout the body. They can also be arranged in small spherical nodules, which we call lymphoid nodules. And they can be organized in lymphoid organs such as lymph nodes, spleen, thymus, and bone marrow. So uh, distribution throughout the body in lymphoid nodules or in lymphoid organs. Examples of lymphoid organs, lymph nodes, spleen, thymus, and the bone marrow. So the lymphoid nodules are located in different areas. So you have mucosa-associated lymphoid tissue where you have mucosa. And for example, in the GI, we see them in the tonsils and the pair patches of the ileum. Also within the appendix, we have lymphoid nodules, aggregation of lymphoid of immune cells. Then in the mucosa of respiratory tract, reproductive tract, and urinary system, we also have lymphoid nodules. And these are the mucosa of all these GIT, rest, reproductive, urinary, we call them mucosa associated lymphoid tissue. So these are um, lymph nodes here, which are lymphoid organs. The spleen is here, the thymus is within the anterior mediastinum, okay? and superior mediastinum extending to the anterior part of the inferior mediastinum. Then we have different lymph nodes, axillary lymph nodes, inguinal lymph nodes, obliteal lymph nodes, different lymph nodes in the body. What is an antigen? It is a molecule that is usually recognized by immune cells. A molecule on the surface of a cell and is recognized by immune cells. While an antibody is just a glycoprotein, okay? And it interacts with a specific antigen. So antibodies belong to the immunoglobulin family. They are glycoproteins that interact with specific antigenic determinants. So we have different cells of the immune system. White blood cells, whether granulocytes or agranulocytes, then um, mast cells, members of the monocytic phagocytic system, antigen presenting cells. Remember, we talked of macrophages, dendritic cells, Langerhans cells. All those are cells of the immune system. We have three types of lymphocytes B lymphocytes, T, and natural killer cells. B and T cells have the ability to selectively recognize a specific epitope. They can recognize a specific epitope. And they are usually differ based on the, the receptors on the surface of this cell. So that's how you differentiate B and T cells based on the surface receptors. B cells, both of them originate in the bone marrow, but B cells will also mature in the bone marrow. T cells originate in the bone marrow, but they leave the bone marrow to go to the thymus for more maturation and proliferation. Okay, and they can also die within the thymus by the process of apoptosis, programmed cell death. So the lymphoid organs are divided to primary or central lymphoid organs, such as bone marrow and thymus. That's where they are produced. And, uh, both T and B produce in the bone marrow and T matures in the thymus. So those are primary lymphoid organs. From these two, they migrate to other lymphoid organs. And these are the secondary or peripheral lymphoid organs, such as the spleen, lymph nodes, tonsils, appendix, and pears patches of the ileum. T and B cells are not uniformly distributed, but they can occupy preferential sites in these organs. Natural killer cells are lymphocytes, but they lack marker molecules. Remember we say T and B cells have marker molecules, specific receptors that differentiate them. Natural killer cells, they lack the marker molecule. 
they form 10 to 15 percent of the lymphocyte that are circulating in blood and they're able to attack cells that are infected by viruses cells that have been transplanted or cancer cells without previous stimulation therefore they're involved in innate immune response so this is the bone marrow where you have b t and natural filler we have two types of t cells cd4 and cd8 depending on the receptor they have so b cells will be produced in the bone marrow and mature in the bone marrow but t cells have to go to the thymus for maturity for them to be either cd4 or cd8 cells Natural killer cells lack the receptors that T and B cells have in their surface. So the thymus is in there. Um, superior mediastinum and anterior mediastinum is a site for T cell maturation. Bone marrow is a home for both B cells and T cells, but B cells mature in the bone marrow. Then we have lymph nodes that are found at junctions of major lymphatic vessels, and it's a site where both T and B cells interact with the antigen, or the T and B cells interact with antigen presented cells. So the organs of the immune system will continue. We have the spleen. Spleen is located in the abdomen within the uh, left uh, upper quadrant. Okay, and we have T and B cells interacting with antigens within the spleen. Then we also have mucosa associated lymphoid tissue, which we've talked about. You find in GIT, in the rest, in genital urinary system. The mucosa will contain lymphoid organs. We also have the tonsils and the adenoids, okay, and the oropharynx and nasopharynx, pairs patches of the ileum. So all these are able to respond to antigens that try to enter the body through the mucosal surface. Is the thymus and the arterial mediastinum, the adenoids and the nasopharynx, the tonsils and the oropharynx, the spleen in the left upper quadrant, and the bone marrow here, where the T and B cells um, are produced. Okay, before then, we have the um, lymph nodes, the cubital fossa in the axilla, parasternal lymph nodes, okay, popliteal lymph nodes, cervical lymph nodes, and so on and so forth. So, lymphoid tissue is basically connective tissue with immune cells, mainly lymphocytes. They are usually free, but they may be encapsulated to form lymphoid organs. You have, they are made up of free immune cells and rich network of reticular fibers, which is collagen type 3. So the thymus is a lymphoid epithelial organ. It's usually in the arterial mediastinum. It's active during childhood. Then when you reach puberty, it involutes. Okay? So Usually T cells arise in the bone marrow, then they migrate into the thymus for maturation. So we have epithelial cells in the thymus that provide mechanical support to the T cells in the thymus. So towards the center, the epithelial framework of the thymus is usually coarse with very few lymphocytes. So at the periphery, you have many lymphocytes. At the center, you have very few lymphocytes. The thymus is highly cellular in the outer cortex and less cellular in the medulla. The medulla is the center. The outer cortex is very cellular. So it has it is it is within a tissue connective tissue capsule. The capsule sends in septum to divide the parenchyma of the gland into incomplete lobules. Each lobule now has an outer dark cortex. It's dark because it's highly cellular so you're seeing very many nuclei and a central light medulla because it has less population of the so, histology of the thymus. It's surrounded by connective tissue capsule. Capsule sends in septa to divide the gland into lobules. Each lobule has an outer peripheral dark staining cortex and a lighter inner medulla. Within the connective tissue, you can see neurovascular structures. So, the thymus, apart from T cells, also has epithelial cells, which we call the NAS cells. These NAS cells promote differentiation and proliferation of T cells. What are the functions of NAS cells? They promote differentiation and proliferation of T cells. They also secrete hormones that will regulate T cell maturation and proliferation. Okay? So the inner surface of the capsule of the thymus and the septa is lined by these epithelial cells which are lying on the basement membrane. And this epithelium will be close to the epithelium of capillaries, okay, 
So you have capillaries which have endothelial lining, endothelial cells lying on a basement membrane, together with nurse cells lying on the basement membrane. These four structures form the blood thymus barrier. Nurse cells lying on the basement membrane, capillary endothelial cells lying on the basement membrane form the blood thymus barrier. What is the function of blood thymus barrier? It's a sheath that acts as a barrier to prevent antigenic material in the blood from entering thymic parenchyma. Blood is coming in with antigens. It's getting to the thymus so that you can present the antigens to the immune cells that are there. But you don't want these antigens to enter the parenchyma of the thymus. That is why you need a blood thymus barrier to prevent antigens from the blood from entering the parenchyma of the thymus. It is formed by nurse cells lying on the basement membrane and capillary endothelial cells lying on the basement membrane. So this is the connective tissue capsule, sends in septa to divide the gland into lobules. Each lobule has an outer dark staining, highly cellular cortex, and an inner light staining, medulla. Okay? So you can appreciate the cortex, you can appreciate the medulla, this is the capsule. We said in puberty, the thymus undergoes involution. So it will be replaced, the thymic tissue is replaced by adipose tissue. So this is the cortex, you can see a, a highly cellular and it contains immature. So maturation begins from the surface near, near the capsule towards the center. So immature and maturing uh, T cells, the thymocytes. And also you have the nurse cells or epithelial reticular cells. So the outer cortex will have large lymphocytes. These are the ones dividing, so actively undergoing mitosis. And as you come inside, they are maturing. So they move deeper into the cortex towards the medulla. Then after they have matured, they now acquire the surface markers so that you're able to know which one is T helper and which one is a cytotoxic T cell. In the medulla, we have what you call hassle corpuscles. What are hassle corpuscles? The epithelial cells, epithelial reticular cells, they become flattened. Then they'll be surrounded, okay? They'll be arranged concentrically and filled with keratin filament. That's what forms hassle corpuscles. Their functions is unknown, but usually they may calcify. So with age, when you take a slide of the thymus, you can see calcified hassle corpuscles in the medulla. So that is a feature when you're describing the medulla, you say it has it is less cellular compared to the cortex, and the presence of hassle corpuscles in the medulla. And these are epithelial reticular cells arranged concentrically and they're filled with keratin. Remember, these epithelial cells have large nuclei and their cytoplasm is usually eosinophilic, pink-red. They take up acid stain and they have prominent basement membrane. What are the functions of the thymus? Maturation of T lymphocytes, we've said. They help to develop immunological self-tolerance, okay, so that you can tolerate your own cells to avoid autoimmune conditions where you start attacking your own cells. Then, the epithelial cells, the nurse cells, they produce hormones and cytokines that regulate T cell maturation and proliferation. And their secretion is by paracrine secretion. Name the four hormones produced by the thymus thymosine, thymopoietin, thymulin, and thymus humoral factor. These are paracrine, not endocrine. They are paracrine. And they act as growth factors for T cell maturation and proliferation. Thymosine, thymulin, thymopoietin, and thymus humoral. So the thymus is supplied by internal thoracic and inferior thyroid vessels from subclavian artery, and you have postcapillary venules that allow lymphocytes to pass in and out of the thymus. There are no apparent lymphatics into the thymus. The next video will discuss the lymph nodes.